so today I'm going to be talking about the loot distribution along the map of Rust. And that's an interesting topic in that it doesn't seem very intriguing and entertaining, but I assure you it is extremely helpful. It's it's really awesome, and especially when it comes to A, where you're planning to make your base, but B, which a lot of people are going to you know sound a lot more appealing, is when you're deciding on what base to raid. Because you're always like, does this base have juice? And people look at bases and they see certain things and they think, oh, this base looks like it's got a lot of stuff. When in reality, I don't really think you can determine that from the way the base looks, but rather where the base is. So, I mean, obviously the huge bases with 18 wraps of high walls are going to have a lot of stuff, but because it's, people are always on, and there's a lot of them most likely, they're all they're on all the time, and they have a lot of stuff. They've been, you know, gathering for a while. So they're going to have things from the widest parts of the map. However, when you're going to smaller bases, which can have the most profit, it's like a much different story. You see a 2x2 two two with a triangle airlock, and you know that that thing could either have literally nothing but a sleeping bag and a campfire in it, but it could also have just complete riches. It could have so much stuff. So that's when things like this come in handy. You need to understand what gives off almost like an aura in the game where the you'll find materials more ludicrous in that aura and how big these auras are and how to identify them so that you can understand where you want to build and who you want to raid. For instance, it all depends on the playstyle of your group as well. I like to play a more like farmy and crafty playstyle, so I find areas that have a lot of high quality. So like, I'll normally build near mill tons, or near train yard, or in the snow most of the time, because that's where a lot of those things spawn. And that's really important to understand how like your group and your playstyle really affect what you need. If you're one of those groups that doesn't farm anything but sulfur and they just go raid, raid, raid for everything, they hate touching rad towns and doing anything like that, then you're going to want to build in the desert near a cliff where there's just a ton of sulfur and you can farm all day and then go raid everyone else that lives in those other component rich and high quality rich areas. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. I think it's going to be a pretty large video, but it's also extremely important to hear me through because a lot of this stuff is going to be things you already know, but actually understanding the mechanics and how they fit is something that not everyone knows. So, yeah. All right. So, let's get to those auras that I was talking about. One of the uh one of the things you probably don't think about a lot is cloth and where you're going to find a lot of cloth. So, one place you're always going to find just a destructive amount of cloth is by launch because the open fields that are within the radiation boundary are completely flat where you can see just a ton of it and it's in like the perfect spawning parameters so there's always a ton of cloth near launch if you make a circle around it, you'll probably get close to five six hundred cloth so you're gonna want to say that all the bases that are in a decent radius of big fields and grasslands are gonna have a lot of cloth so if we go through and we find some of these areas, you could say that, like, all the bases on this whole side of the map, all the way up to pretty much airfield and down, are all going to have a lot of cloth. Here, maybe, you know, a little bit here, um, a little bit up top as well. So, bases in these areas are going to have a lot of cloth. Notice how there's no hemp in the desert, and cactus doesn't give you a whole lot, so bases down here are going to have not a lot of it. And if you run the road properly and recycle often, you could say that a lot of the bases up here could have cloth as well. However, not a lot of people actually take advantage of that way of getting cloth, even though it's much more productive than finding hemp. So, that's the cloth border. Let's say for a second that we want to know about high quality. Train yard gives off a decent bit, so we'll say, like, you know, most of the bases in this area... Oh, that's a terrible color. We'll say most of the bases in this area have a decent amount of high quality. Launch, since it gives so many mid-tier components, like semi-bodies, pipes, and road signs, anywhere really near here, anything that runs launch is going to have a massive, massive amount of high quality. So, you can think of that. Uh, Mill Tons has even more, but it's from higher tier components rather than just a massive amount of them. So, obviously, all the bases around mill tons are going to have a lot of high quality also. So, you take this in and you kind of fill in what would be, like, a zone. So, we'd say that everything in this pink square right here is going to have a lot of high quality in it. You could say that sulfur is going to be in some of these areas. I'll talk about the sulfur on its own later, because that's really all anyone ever cares about. But, 
these are the things you have to take into account. So if you constantly find yourself unable to run out the door with meds because you never have a box of meds because you can never craft a box at a time, you're going to want to build in an area that has this cloth because most of the time it's not low grade that you're running out of, especially with the new animal AI update that came out last month. It's normally a cloth thing. So if you build in like one of these areas surrounded by yellow, you're going to have more cloth and you're going to have more likely chance to get a box of meds and so you can go out and win more fights so let's say uh you want more high quality because your group i don't know they're not that great at pvp so you normally don't have a box of guns and you have to continually craft guns to keep your supply up you know just a few less than reputable members of your group will have this happen to you and then you're going to want to build in a pink area not these, because these, these are I was labeling for sulfur. But up here, you're going to want to build somewhere up here. And so every resource that you can think of, like animals are probably going to be found over near the coast more, so you have to keep that in in, uh, in mind. You have to think of all of the things you're going to want. So, like, PvP is another huge thing. The more PvP in the area, most of the time, the more loot that a base has, because it brings it out of uh, certain bases and puts it into the bigger bases that normally have more members. And PvP, you're always going to find around mill tons, you're always going to find it around launch, and you're always going to find it around airfield for whatever reason, because airfield, I, I don't understand why airfield and water treatment always have so much PvP. There's no real statistic way I can put my finger on it, but you would think people would be fighting over dome, because, you know, dome has the least, you, you only need 10 rads to go up there and get that stuff. But And there's more of it, frankly, than in Airfield, where it takes longer, it takes more stuff, and an even a keycard set. But people are always fighting near Airfield, people are always fighting near Water Treatment, and for good reason, always fighting over here near Launch and Military Tunnels. Um, so for every resource and for everything that your group cares about, you're going to want to think of that. So you, let's say you talk to your group and you say, okay, this wipe, at the beginning of wipe, we're going to want a lot of guns right off the bat. We're going to want a lot of meds right off the bat. Why? Probably because, I don't know, you're thinking about taking one of the first few helis that come out on wipe day. That's normally what I do. So you're going to think, okay, I want to be in a pink area and I want to be in a yellow area as well. You'd probably build your base, boom, right here. That way you could come from train yard, you come from tons, launch, and you get all the cloth around launch. If you really want PvP, you can take this valley and you can get to airfield. Seems like a really good spot, right? But it's also one of the most highly contested spots, and this wipe, this was right about P11 right there, and the biggest group in the server was living there. I wonder why, because they have someone that's in their group that is in charge of where they're going to build their base, and they're taking these things into account. You're, most people, when they do build a base, they take this into account, but they don't give it its whole worth, you know? They think for a second, like, oh, let's build near Milton so we can have a lot of high quality, but you never really think about... Everything gives off an aura, you know? So, like, this is the distribution of loot along the map. You're going to find more cloth in this area. You're going to find high quality in this area, sulfur down here. It just makes sense. It's the it's the way each map is structured. And I always use long, too, because that's the server that I always play on. And I normally play on it solo as well, where these things come in handy even more. You need this in order to really do well in solo. You have to have the advantage on people through intelligence rather than through numbers. And I'm not saying all Zergs are stupid, but, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, we need the upper hand, and this is how us solar players get it most of the time. So the next thing that we need to talk about when determining the amount of loot a base has is some of the more obvious things. Like, if you go out and you fight a group, and they use an LR or an AK, you obviously know that they have some higher tier weapons. If you see them take down Heli, or if you see them roof camping with an M2, you obviously know that's going to be a really decent raid. But for those bases, it's like, you know that they have a lot of stuff. Like, you know it's going to take you 80 rockets to get to their loot. You know that it's going to have a lot of juice in it. But we want to know about the smaller bases, because those are the ones that are just so different from each one and those are the ones that can just get you so much stuff for nothing and so one of the things i want to go over is deployables if you find a mid tier or a low tier or even a high tier deployable outside of someone's base you can assume how they got it and if how they got it is a rad town then you can also assume that they're going to have a whole lot of scrap in their base Especially if they have a whole lot of deployables. That means that they've just been looting that rad town for an extremely long time. Consecutively as well. So if you find um, landmines or snap traps, you know they've gotten airdrops before. Because no one crafts landmines, no one crafts snap traps, let's be real. 
if you find a metal barricade, like the heavy metal barricade, you know they've looted mill tons at least once, because you can only really find those out of elite crates or military crates. So you can d figure out what a base has been doing with their spare time due to the deployables outside of the base. If you see a lot of wooden signs, they hit a lot of barrels. So if you need sewing kits and barrel farm, boom, you hit that base. Because it's only about a thousand gunpowder to whack a 2x2, two two, yet they always have so much stuff. Or so much of one thing, depending on that solo player's playstyle, or that group's playstyle, if they're living out of a 2x2 two two for whatever reason. So, another thing we need to look at is pumpkins. I know I'm going to mention pumpkins later, but two different reasons. This is because pumpkins are a great way to judge activity, and the golden rule when determining the juice of a base is activity is directly related to sauce. You gotta remember that. And so if you can figure out and write down how often a group is on due to large furnaces, or if it's a, like a 2x2 two two and you see a bunch of pumpkins outside, you better hit that base before somebody else does, man. If you ever find a 2x2, two two, even with a key lock, don't let key locks discourage you. I promise solo players get just as much stuff, especially if they know what they're doing. If you see a 2x2 two two or a 3x3, three three, a small base with like one or two doors, and it's got a pumpkin patch outside, you know that they're active. And if they're active and they live out of that small base, you know it's going to have stuff. You have to hit those. That's how you come up with come-ups, man. You, you can't, your playstyle can't get you everything in the game. My playstyle, I normally run low on an animal fat a lot, because I don't kill animals too often. But I'll never run out of scrap or high quality, so I'll always have a lot of guns, but not a lot of meds. And so in order to get that, I have to raid. Everyone has to raid to cover for things that their playstyle doesn't cover themselves. And so by figuring out what the bases that cover the opposite playstyle look like, you'll be able to have a much like wider selection of stuff in your base your loot will become more broad and it's better to have broad loot because broad loot means you always have ammo you always have meds you always have armor and you always have guns and that's what you need in order to make plays in order to snowball a thing with medium-sized bases and like medium-sized raids are that the bases that have certain things strategically upgraded to metal or high quality like the base shown are much more likely to have a lot of stuff in them you need to understand that, like, even though these bases, they're going to not be that profitable because they're going to cost you a lot to raid. They've thought through all of the ways in, and they've made the best ways in them a lot more expensive through making some of the pieces of the base high quality or armored, like in this part. Um, and so you have to understand these bases are going to have a lot of stuff, and they've been out for a long time is the main thing that you need to take away. Those bases have been there for probably a few days, and there's not any intention on making the base any better or any more strong, and so they're just going to chill on top of what they have and snowball and just keep getting loot. Those are the bases you're going to get about the same amount of sulfur you spent back, but you're going to have a lot of guns and you're going to have a lot of buff materials that you would have needed to farm anyway. So I pulled the map back up for Rustified Long 2 just to show you a few more things. Whenever you're raiding, people always think of one thing. Sulfur. Everyone wants sulfur profit. Now, personally, I don't agree with that that much. Most of the time, I'd like to get a row of high quality rather than, you know, two rows of sulfur or whatever. But everyone really wants to know about the sulfur. So let's talk about the sulfur. Now, sulfur has a 33% chance of spawning per node in snow, so up here, and desert, so down here. The areas that are in this little quadrant, I guess, in each of these, are going to have more sulfur nodes per node. Exactly one third. Every like node you have, or you find, is going to have a third of a chance of being sulfur, a third of stone, and a third of metal. Now, all of the nodes that are in this area here, you know, all the grassy area, that's 55 or 50% 50 for stone, 25 for sulfur, and 25 for metal. So you're going to find more stone and less sulfur. Now you also know that nodes spawn around rocks. So if you're trying to find where the most sulfur per each map is, you're going to have to find little bumps. So like, I expected this area right here will be loaded with sulfur. This area will probably be loaded with sulfur. Uh, this whole mountainside right here on both sides, close to the ground, will be full of sulfur. And, you know, you can just go along and pick out a few spots. It's not that hard. You'll get the hang of it. I know right here is going to be loaded as well. So if you're trying to find a base that has a lot of sulfur, you have to think of all the areas that are going to have sulfur, and then you kind of just like put a little like a ring around them. So I would say if you're looking at a base that's like here, 
they're going to be getting sulfur from a lot of these areas here. They're going to be getting other things like red cards from here. They're going to be able to get blue cards from there. They're going to have... There's a river here, so there's probably going to be some food. Um, and more food generally means uh, better gear. And I know it doesn't make any sense, but people that come out of their base naked with a P2 and 100 health make a lot more plays than people who come out of their base naked P2 60 health. So if you live near a river and you always have that food supply, you're just going to be getting gear and you're not ever going to attribute it to the river, but I promise. Out of all the hours that I have, I can promise that having certain things like that will absolutely boost your income. So, also, the biggest, one of the biggest ways to tell if a base has sauce, if it's got the loot, is if it has pumpkins outside. And you look at the size of the patch. So, like, if the patch is massive, then it's been going for like at least a few hours two three four hours maybe people have been on they've been picking the pumpkins eating them planting them and it gets bigger and bigger exponentially so you have to take that into account if that pumpkin patch is you know pretty freaking large then they've been on for active for a very long time and they've been eating which means they've probably been fighting or farming and that's what you want in a juicy base now i'm more of a high quality person so you're going to need to find the areas that give off a lot of high quality and that is launch, military tunnels, and train yard. Now, these two right here are pretty obvious. Train yard is not so obvious because the puzzle, the blue card puzzle on train yard, gives you like 13 boxes with like a 50% chance of being military crates that have like a 25% chance of having high quality in them, about 20. So you're going to get about 40 high quality on average per run at to the top of the building with a key card set. So mill tons obviously has a ton of high quality because you're going to be like recycling most of the things that you get from mill tons. Um, and they're normally the higher tier components and stuff here. And here you'd be recycling like the mid tier stuff and be getting just about as much. So that was my best shot at covering loot distribution across a uh, rust map and identifying juicy bases from not so juicy bases because the golden rule again is activity equals juice. But um, anyway, look, I know I hit some things twice like the pumpkins and some of the maps and I know I didn't cover everything, but that's because like these videos aren't scripted. I kind of just load up Audacity and I just start talking and rambling because I have 7,000 hours and a lot of those hours are not PvP, believe it or not. A lot of that is just like, I, I don't know. I've always really seek to understand the games that I play. And so since this is the game that I love the most and the game that I have the most fun playing, I've really tried to understand the deep meanings behind why certain things work the way they do in this game. So that's why I have all this knowledge to spread around the community, and that's why, you know, I was so happy to see 50 subs from my last video and be like, wow, people actually kind of want to hear me to speak about this. So, uh, yeah, I plan to be making a lot of these videos, and I might maybe, like, make some about just discussing the different meta or, like, different opinions on the game with people, especially, like, I don't know, people that also have seven to 10,000 hours, and just under trying to understand is, like, a whole different opinions and maybe some things i'm speaking about the meta aren't completely true in other people's eyes i don't know because a lot of these things are opinion there is no set meta like there is in other games that everyone goes over the meta you know like in league there's the meta isn't an opinion but in rust it is because no one goes over it but like me pretty much so yeah um i also want to give a huge thanks to striker productions yet again because he lets me use like his absolutely amazing rust cinematic stuff at the beginning of my videos to really catch people's eyes so they don't just click off as soon as they see some random 18 year old speaking into a decent mic with terrible editing skills so yeah big thanks to him and um yeah i'll probably try and put out another one of these by the end of the week if you comment about what you think it should be on or something you want to know about i will definitely take that into opinion because i have so many different things i could talk about and so many different things i can make the next video on and it's kind of hard to be honest to figure out which one i want to do like part of me kind of wants to do one on like the entire subject of military tunnels and how that fits into the meta as a whole but i also kind of want to do some other things like 
maybe all of the different graphic settings that can help you out in PvP or if you're trying to play the game to that competitive level. So I don't know. If you guys want to see anything in particular or anything you really want to know about the game, I guarantee you I can answer and I can give you a really nice answer. So if you ask it in chat, maybe that'll be what the next video is about and I'll give you a shout out at the end because I don't know. I have 50 subs. Like, you know, make people feel special. You feel me? So anyway, yeah, this is Big Pig, man. Peace out.